In this video, I'm going over five reasons Linux isn't more popular. So before we get into the top five, I want to go ahead and go over what the Linux market share is right now. So right now it sits about one and a half percent to 2% and it's bounced around this metric for about five years. I went back 10 years and really there's not much change as far as Linux adoption. And these five reasons are why I believe it's just kind of set like this and why it will continue to sit like this until they're actually changed. So uh, let's go ahead and flip over to that. You'll see here the stat counter is a global stats thing where if you go to a website, it records your operating system and also like the browsers and other other metrics. But a lot of people use this. I use it on my website, ChrisTitus.com, and you'll see Linux just stays pretty much right in that range. It started the year out at 1.68. It has bounced above that. Um, and it's dropped to 1.64. So it's pretty stable right in there. But I wanted to give that metric to start out with so we have a basis of what's going on right now as far as Linux adoption goes. It's pretty much non-existent, but um, there are some bright spots and I'm gonna go over that as well. So let's go over reason number one, Linux hasn't increased in adoption, and that is most users don't even know about it. I was over you know, at my mother-in-law's where I installed Linux on her machine, and she's been using it for over a year now, and uh, she likes it. it, it works for her and does everything um, just fine. And I think the main reason why a lot of people don't fit into this mold is they just simply don't know about it. So there's a lot of misinformation out there or just lack of information when it comes to Linux. And that mainly is because it doesn't cost any money, but at the same time with no money, there's no marketing. So most actual people don't know about Linux. And that's why we haven't seen much adoption. Reason number two, traditional attitudes. And what I mean by this is like the invasion of neckbeards or just people looking down on other people. Linux has some of this, hey, I am smarter than you, and if you don't know this, you're stupid kind of mentality. And I see this all the time on forums as a you know IT professional. I've been in this space you know more than 15 years, and I still see this all the time. Where hey, this distro is better, and you can run anything on it. And then you're like, well, you know, there's not a simple package for that to install. And they're like, well, you just build it from source, and. That's a problem because there's less than probably a percentage of the population that wants to build it from source or even would bother building it from source. So this is a major hiccup in the Linux environment. We need to make it easier for people to actually adopt Linux and not look down on them for their lack of knowledge and also kind of standardize these things so your average user is not building a project from source just because it's not on their favorite distro. Me personally, I like Fedora, but a lot of times I'm like, oh, I need that package. And I'm like, oh, nobody's packaged it up. And I end up building it from source. That's not a viable option when we want mainstream adoption coming to Linux. Reason number three, fragmentation. It's really important to know how Linux is fragmented because many times you look up a program and you get a certain set of commands or a package to download that only works in that version of Linux. And it's really uh, a misconception, you know, most people get into it and they're just like, what, I'm, I'm on Linux, but I don't know what type of Linux I'm on. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm always pointing people to either like Debian or some of the more popular distros because they have a bigger community and can get help. But uh, fragmentation is a big problem, you know. And I get why Linux is fragmented, but it's still a problem nonetheless. And I think that could be uh, solved with a lot more marketing and just general outreach and more community coming together to help uh, new Linux users kind of adopt the operating system, which we just don't see very much. And one of the big points why I made this channel was to help people get them on Linux and actually use it and, uh, you know, enjoy it. And that's the big thing where, you know, a lot of people 
mess up and they end up distro hopping and just not getting a good experience because of all the fragmentation. Reason number four, familiarity. And what this is, is I don't mean just, hey, this isn't Windows, I can't get used to it. But software familiarity is a big thing. You got to look at, you know, hey, I've been a Photoshop user for 15 years. I'm not going to just all of a sudden switch over to GIMP because it's free. Hell, I've already paid for, you know, Photoshop CC and I've had it and I've already shelled out $1,000. Most people aren't going to just drop that to go to a freeware version that is frankly a little inferior. And that's a big issue and a lot of Linux users or advocates a lot of times gloss all this over and say, well, you know, it, it, you can learn it. I'm like, no, not not like you're thinking. Most people don't just pick up a new product or a new software and go, oh, well, this is great. It does everything my old software do. I guess I'm just going to learn all this and then use it. Most people pick it up. They look at it and go, okay, well, this is completely different. Forget it. And then they go back to Windows into what they know and you know how to work and do their job. So this is a big problem that we have to solve. And I think a lot of that is just porting software over where it makes it a lot easier on the user to get more familiar with Linux, which I think works better than Windows as far as the OS is concerned. It's easier to operate in my opinion. And if you get those the, the software that they're used to, you know, you get Photoshop over, you get Microsoft Office. These types of things would help adoption greatly because it would kind of take away a lot of the problems they're having. Reason number five, lack of hardware and software support. Now, before you guys skewer me here, I know pretty much everything works per se, but does it work well, just as well, if not better than Windows? And the answer to this is no. And the reason why is because the average day user cannot research and hack around to get the piece of software they want working in Wine or the piece of hardware like a video recorder or a DSLR or a webcam working the way it works in Windows. A lot of times these setups are far more complex than they should be. And that is a big problem, but one that is getting far better as time goes on. Most of everything I do, I can do in Linux. However, some recording or recording software just doesn't work in Linux as well as it does in Windows. Doesn't say, I didn't say right there that it doesn't work at all. I say it just doesn't work as well as Windows. And that's a big difference. I think Linux is caught up to Windows in almost every regard, but this one spot is one place they've made up a ton of ground, but there's still a bit more to go. And that is my five reasons why Linux isn't more popular. Thanks for watching my video. If you have any feedback or comments, please let me know below. And if you'd like to see more tech videos, hit the subscribe button and check me out on my website, chrisTitus.com.